Our top focus this evening, the Prajwal Revanna case, H.D. Revanna, JDS MLA and father of the Hassan MP facing rape charges was granted an interim bail till a final order on his bail plea is passed tomorrow in a molestation case. Revanna was released on bail in a case relating to the abduction of a sexual assault victim on Tuesday. He's currently out on bail. But H.D. Revanna isn't the focus. As we cross over 20 days since the filing of the original case on the 28th of April, the question is, has enough been done to bring Prajwal Revanna before the investigators by all sides? It's a sitting MP facing not one but two rape cases and other sexual assaults where victims have filed their complaints and there is alleged video evidence as well. But he's yet to even appear before investigators for questioning. He remains at large outside of India. There's a blue collar notice, but no word on where he is. What have investigators gathered so far? And should the BJP aggressively demand its ally JDS to bring Prajwal back? Should his passport have been cancelled by now? What is the next step in the case? Has the Congress government in Karnataka taken enough aggressive steps on this matter? Or does it see this in a political calculus? Over 100 intellectuals and writers from across Karnataka have written to the chief minister demanding Prajwal's immediate arrest. JDS chief HD Kumaraswamy claims he has not spoken to Prajwal well, since the allegations surfaced, former Prime Minister H.D. Devagauda has cancelled his 91st birthday celebrations. But has the JDS failed in ensuring Prajwal faces investigators? <laughs> Well, obviously, this case, is, case raises extremely serious questions on why a sitting MP facing multiple rape cases is at large and is yet to face uh, investigators. Joining me this evening, former Special Director of the IB, Yashwar Danja Azad, former ADGP in Karnataka, Sanjay Sahai, Abba Singh, advocate and women's rights activist, and activist Brinda Adige from Bengaluru, also joined by my colleague Pratibha Raman, who's been tracking this case very, very closely. Pratibha, give us a status check as far as the case is concerned, what investigators are telling you, and what perhaps the biggest roadblock is in getting Prajwal Revanna back before investigators. What we hear from the investigators is that one of the biggest roadblocks is the fact that Prajwal Revanna is enjoying his diplomatic passport and is not here in India. Considering a heinous crime or a serious allegation like rape charges, it amounts to immediate arrest. You don't even need an arrest warrant is what we are told by the investigators there. Anywhere in India, he can be picked up. But considering the fact that he has a diplomatic passport and is also touted to be in Germany, where there is a validity of 90 days that is available, it becomes one of the biggest hurdles. Now, the question is, even though there is a blue corner notice that has been issued, why not a red corner notice? And if there is a, a blue corner notice that has already been issued, what is the next step that can be taken to cancel the diplomatic passport? Of course, there has been a request that has been placed before the MEA there, but then the MEA has been insisting on a court direction, and that is the protocol to be followed. The, there are questions that are being raised as to why is the SIT not approaching the court nor the MHA to uh, seek an immediate cancellation of uh, the diplomatic passport. But on the other hand, a status check is uh, definitely on HD Ravana there with respect to the bail hearing that took place today uh, with respect to the sexual harassment case. Now, we all know that he has already secured bail in uh, the kidnap charges that were involved. But with respect to the sexual harassment that has been involved, a uh, set of arguments that are presented by the prosecution is the fact that there is a rape charge that is involved and that cannot be bifurcated between accused number one and accused number two. These were the objections that were raised, but of course an interim bail was granted to H.D. Devana there. The main bail plea will be heard tomorrow with respect to this case while Prajwal Revana is still on the run. Back to you, Veera. Right. Important points that you make there. Obviously, there are complex procedural issues here and we have 
some of the finest experts around on this subject to uh, speak this evening. Uh, let me begin by going across to Mr. Yashwardhan Azad, sir, first. Before we go into the nitty gritties and the exact things, exact details, isn't this a dangerous precedent that a sitting MP is not yet facing investigators 20 days after multiple rape charges have been filed against him? Well, I think uh, it's already late, you know. Uh, a lot of things could have been done uh, by the state government, uh, by the, uh, his own party, and by the government. Uh, first thing, the party itself should have dismissed him from the membership of, of uh, his own party. Uh, number two, uh, the, the state government was aware of these things which were happening. You know, one year back, he had... Uh, uh, got this notice from the court that nothing will be shown by the media. So what was uh, boiling over, everyone knew about it. And in fact, uh, when these uh, videos uh, circulated uh, about two days before the actual polling day, uh, that's was the time when the police uh, had a clear picture uh, that uh, he sh they should have given a notice to him that you will not go anywhere till we verify uh, the, the, you know, the purity of the videos, etc. But he was allowed to go. I mean, uh, obviously, because of uh, certain contacts or, or, or whatever it would be. The third thing is that if you, you know, this diplo uh, diplomatic status is a kind of a misnomer. This diplomatic status it's, it's basically the passport which is given to the MP uh, by virtue of being an MP. So, you know, this is the home country which is calling him back because of a proper crime which has been committed. So the Interpol is not bound uh, by, by that status abroad because it's the home country. If there is something, a, an act of misdemeanor right. committed by him abroad, that will be a different thing which may be prevented. So in this particular case, uh, the Interpol is there. Okay. Definitely he will come back. But uh, the problem remains that initially the action was not taken. Okay, you saying initially action was not taken, Abba, uh, is that how you see this? Where is the flaw or is this larger reflection of somebody with political power who's facing a serious charge, as serious as rape, not facing investigators even 20 days after the cases were filed? Absolutely, you know, it is all these political power, these positions of power where these men commit crimes and the police are helpless. In fact, you must have, you remember, remember in Bridge Bhushan Sharan Singh, Delhi police did not even register an FIR even though the wrestlers were sitting at Dharna and all that. So in Prajwal Rivanna case, if you see, they had the audacity to get gag orders, not one, two, but almost 80 gag orders they managed to get. Also, the father, if you see, is out on bail. What message is it sending to the society that nothing happens to the rapist, nothing happens to the corrupt if you have full politicians on your side or if you are a politician? Now, in Prajwal Rivanna case, the offenses are so heinous. He has kidnapped people, he has raped women, he has blackmailed them. Now, when he's out from there, he must be trying to get all evidence destroyed. He must be threatening the witnesses. So, we've given them so much time to destroy evidence, threaten witness, and by giving this bail, we have sent the message that nothing is going to happen to him. In fact, if they wanted a court order, SIT on day one should have moved the court order, got an order, sent it to the embassy wherever he is, and ensured that he is sent back to India. Besides that, he should have been declared an absconder. His property should have right. been attached by now. If we had done all those things, he would have come back to India. But because he's got political patronage and vested interest, he continues to stay there. And that is what it happens in all these cases. Even when he comes here, the witness would be so mortified, the victims would be so harassed okay. and mortified by them that they would turn host time. Important points that you make there. Sanjay Sahai, have investigators done enough in building pressure to ensure that Prajwal Revanna comes back? We know that political party that he represents may be backing him, may be saying that this is a case of witch hunt against him. But have investigators done enough to ensure that there is enough pressure built on him and the system to get him back? We are not getting into the political uh, smoke screen at all. The first and foremost is that there was no Suomoto case taken against him and that is why he was able to escape from this country. The second point is you are having a diplomatic passport. You are an MP and there is large number of penis crimes against you and we are still sitting with a blue corner notice which primarily means 
getting additional information on this person's identity, location, and his activities in relation to this particular criminal offense. What we are interested in is to bring this fellow back to the investigating agency or whosoever is the law enforcer right here in Karnataka. That has not happened. After he escaped from the country, there was a notice which was given after the case got registered and SIT got into action. And his lawyer told that after a week, this gentleman will come. What happened later was another SIT notice. And beyond that, nothing has happened. So from the blue corner notice, second, certainly we should have graduated to a, a red corner notice, which primarily means getting the location of the accused and the arrest of that particular person. So these, these things have certainly not happened. And uh, there, there are a large number of other things which regarding the collaboration between the state government and the central government. It seems generally to be a battle between two, trying to put the blame on each other, but given the nature of the crime and the nature right. of investigation, which has finally uh, entailed, because you need both the state investigating agency and you also know a large amount of support from the central government, so as to fix this sitting MP who has absconded maybe in hindsight, but he has certainly absconded and he is not ready to come back. So end of the day is a fugitive. Right. And and there are other impact also. There is also reports saying that right. uh, victims are moving out of Hassan and a variety of other things. So regarding the total pressure and also the speed at which the investigation should go and the knowledge which should come to the public domain, I think there are things wanting. The total contours of this crime are still not, uh, is not completely there in the open with regard right. to total number of victims, scenes of offense, duration, and variety of other things. Right, you're making some very, very important points and I want to get into the technicalities with you and Mr. Yashwardhan Azad in just a bit and Abha as well. But Brinda, uh, there is a fear that as we move further away from elections, given that there is an enormous political connotation to this case and political impact as far as this case is concerned, there is a fear genuinely that as we move further away from elections and perhaps post polls, there may be a loss of focus. Is that your fear as well? Absolutely. It is my fear. It is also the fear of hundreds of activists and the whole families themselves. Because right now, it is a slugfest between the political parties, for whatever it might be. And everybody is waiting for the 4th of June. But there are two issues here. One is H.D. Revana getting bail, which means the message that is going across is not such a serious offense. He might have some cases. His son might have some cases, but we will give bail. While there are hundreds of others who may not get bail because they are not as influential as H.D. Revana. The other, like the other panelists pointed out, there is no cause for the union government not to issue a red alert. Why is it that they are not giving a red corner alert to somebody like this man? If this man was a terrorist, Fredwell Ravana, if he was a terrorist, will my union government have the same kind of lackadaisical attitude towards him? Is this not terrorism against women? There are hundreds of women that he has abused, assaulted, raped, videographed them, and all of this is out there. So what are these women going through? We do not want to ask these questions. Nobody is asking these questions except the media. And can you imagine what their families are going through? They are not in their hometowns. They are not allowed to stay in their homes. Right. They are not allowed to go to work. These videos are right now being used as porn. What is my state government and the union government doing? Why is it not addressing this particular case as terrorism against women and get this Pradwal Revana back. And I think we also have to, have to play, place an onus on the courts. There was no there was no hurry for H.D. Revana to be given bail. Yes, bail is a right of every citizen of this country, but in this particular case, he could have still been in jail. Nothing wrong. At least by that, you would be instilling right. confidence in the people that this man is going by the law and the law is taking all the complaints seriously. Because even today we are having trouble, women coming out and filing the FIR and their statements. And that is because there is no confidence in the women in the state right. and its machinery. You are making an extremely important point, a larger point. I have literally two minutes left. Abba, first to you, very, very quickly. Do you believe that investigators and the prosecutors now need to move the court for cancellation of his passport? Or should it be worked out between the state and the center? Very briefly. 
No, they need to move the court immediately and get a um, notice of extradition issued to the embassy of that uh, country and he should be brought back immediately because a strong message needs to go that you may be howsoever high but the law of the land is above you. We need to send that message that there is a strong law and order which is maintained in the city. Okay, last 20 seconds. Yashwardhan Azad, do you believe, uh, how does the process work? Is it easy to issue a red corner notice? How do we deal with this, as Brinda is saying, if it was a case of terrorism? Well, I think it's uh, very simple. Actually, it's the CBI, which is the nodal authority, which uh, uh, asks the uh, Interpol for the red corner notices. And there must be some procedure uh, in this particular case. I won't give much. I don't think it's not Interpol that which is not trying to catch it. It's just a question of technicality. Sooner or later, he'll be brought. Whether his passport is cancelled or not, that is not really a big issue. But the biggest message would be when their own party dismisses him from the from the membership and the the, the, the right. central government should dismiss should okay. uh, you know finish his passport, Some cancel his passport. Right. Okay, Sanjay Sahai. Uh what should the investigators do? Very, very briefly. See, first and foremost, they have to move to the court and get orders and move ahead. And whatever is the documentation required for a red corner notice that CBI should do as the National Bureau and uh, get it across to Interpol. Besides, there are lots of movement on the diplomatic channels on immigration. Okay. That data will also be available all across. So I think all these things pieced together, I think it will give a very concrete okay. evidence. And with that, you can add digital and video forensic evidence for whatever work has already been done by SIT and pushed forward. I, I don't think it should be such a complicated okay. issue to get into a red corner notice. Now that he himself has literally behaved like a fugitive, okay. is acting like one. And uh, depending on whatever, whatever evidence is available in the public domain, it does not show any inclination to come back. Right. Important points that all of you have made. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll keep a close focus on this case, uh, which raises some extremely serious and disconcerting questions. But